welcome to the leaders of tomorrow the only show right now on indian television where you the msme get center stage to voice your opinions and thoughts this is eating us special daily initiative to give msmes and entrepreneurs the opportunity to be front and center in every industry and area that matters to you today on direct connect a panel of experts answering your questions and later on the show on small joints we will feature kavi snail care On Direct Connect tonight, we have Vishal Thakkar, co-founder of Contratra Universal, as well as Prabhakar Dalal, the former ED of Exim Bank, answering all your queries. At the end of this episode, we'll tell you how you too can send us your questions. Just stay tuned. Vishal, Mr. Dalal, thank you both very much for being with us here tonight. Uh, let's kick today's show off with a call that's coming to us from the line of Rajil Das. Rajil? Yeah, see, we are from every at Event Gurus, you know, we have the it's a small event technology platform and you know waiting continuously to improve the life of all players in an event and my question is not only about mine but many startups you know who are doing great disruptive products uh, uh, they are really great if you go into deep into it but the query but, but the problem or the bottleneck is the reluctance of the market to be the first to try out a disruptive product something like you know um, people like the idea people like the product but they want to wait wait for someone else to do it and then people do it and then i'll follow suit this process you know this startups to offer product for free of course they want to what you call validate and all these things um, uh, but that costs uh, a good amount especially for enterprises product enterprise product like ours so um, you know, what is the best way to tackle this you know to reduce the cost of uh, what you call uh, entry into market in one of our previous episodes we were talking about r&d so along those lines we're talking about innovation dredgel's basic query is there isn't room or space or incentive really for innovation what would you have to say okay one is if i if i come to his question in in particular he is worried about giving away his product for free or for a very low price there are alternatives to it he can capture the um, uh recommendations or testimonials of his early customers and he can make his early customers as his brand ambassadors to promote his product secondly he may ask a a group of people to endorse his products uh, using a digital media marketing channel and he can uh, give away a part of his service free where you know the other part is being paid for so these are couple of quick ideas that are coming to my mind how he can achieve the kind of proliferation that he is expecting expecting to achieve for a very innovative kind of service that he is offering sure uh, it's an event management company and they have some innovative and disruptive practices and the clients are not willing to accept because it's a disruptive thing and whether they it will be successful or not they are not sure of that so i um, to me also one suggestion comes to mind what he should do is he should have a calibrated fee structure like number of footfalls he should guarantee that uh, x number footfalls are there below that it will be free then you know slab should be there then uh, he will cover his cost more than that 10% margin 20% margin 30% margin so clients will also be happy that minimum this much footfalls are there then they might give the uh, award the contract to him and then if he is able to get more footfalls for the event then he gets more fee so that way he can you know uh, launch his product and uh, uh, expand his client base okay so you are suggesting innovation not just in product but also innovation in how you are marketing that product and how you are able to communicate that to your clients that's uh, the suggestion for you rajul our next query is an email that's coming to us from bhupendra mayani bhupendra says the manufacturers and suppliers of impose substitute products some of the plastic raw material that's being used now in uh, transportation technology like the railways but that is not easily available in india he says they want to import it but their biggest competition is multinational companies he says how can they beat mncs and import their products the internet has leveled the playing field for everyone so what would you have to say to an msme that says one of the biggest competition of course is an mnc yeah i mean uh, he will have uh, less overheads in addition to that he can 
provide personalized service, support service after sales, you know many things he can do use his USP as compared to MNC. MNC may have some advantage because they will import in bulk and therefore their cost may be slightly lower but then he, they should be add on to what he is providing to his clients and he can still stay in competition. Okay. Pupendra, that's uh, one of the suggestions for you from our experts. Our next query is coming to us from Satish Vag, who's written into us on our Facebook page. And at the end of the show, we'll tell you how you too can write into us on Facebook. He says the exporters, manufacturing suppliers of, and I'm not even going to try and attempt to pronounce any of these and uh, chemicals names. He says due to the perception that the chemicals industry is a polluting industry, they faced a lot of harassment and had to eventually shut down their business. He says they're not getting any support from the government. How do they resolve this issue? How do they restart their business? That's very unfortunate. Okay, see there are, I mean, as we go forward in progress of our nation, uh, our government is very, very responsible socially as well as from an environment perspective of not letting certain hazardous companies exist in India. So that is something which and also the recent Paris Climate Agreement that government has signed. We are very, very com uh, committed not to pollute the environment and having said that the kind of chemicals that he has mentioned would definitely have no future in, in terms of manufacturing so far as within our country is concerned. So he may look at uh, a, a different business model wherein you know he can import all of this and, and can do the further process and, and, and sell it to the industries which require these as raw materials. So uh, I think we need to respect uh, the fact that you know we will have a sustainable and a more responsible progress. So I think he will have to alter his business model in, in these terms because it's going to be difficult going forward to uh, run these hazardous industries in India for sure. But uh, I don't know these specific products, but there are many chemical products which uh, have effluents. So what should be done is that such units should not be within the town, should be outside the town. There should be a cluster approach where they can do the treatment of effluents so that it doesn't pollute air and water. Then they should also have some green initiatives like they should plant trees around in the surrounding areas. So uh, quite a few things can be attempted by setting up these units outside the town, having a treatment of affluents. And clearly and there polluting. is a set of guidelines that he is not meeting. And his primary aim should be to meet what the guidelines are, given of course that things are changing globally as well. So Satish, it's very unfortunate, the state of affairs at your uh, business. Uh, but like our experts are suggesting, do spend some time understanding what the framework and the guidelines are for your industry and change your business model if need be. Our next query is uh, a call coming to us from the line of V. Somasundram. Go ahead. Started about 27 years back. So 20 years back, I had a lot of people standing right in front of my gate asking for a job. Now I am in front of my gate, gate asking for labor. That is the status now. Wherever my industries are there, I got three places, property in three places, and in industry in three places. All three places, labor shortage is there. My question is, people, they say unemployment, and, and every industry, including my industrial estate, we, have got, we don't get labors at all. So, so how, how to get these labors? I don't know how labor intensive uh, the chemicals industry is, but if he's saying that labor is becoming a challenge, what would you have to say? Okay, labor is becoming a challenge not for just his industry, but across because with GST implementation being a destination tax, most of the states which were not getting revenue have started to get revenue. And most of the labor which was migrating from rural areas of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, are now able to earn similar amount of wages right back in their hometown. So I think two, two aspects, one is to pay uh, better wages, provide hygienic condition, facilities like stay food, etc. so that they are uh, retained and they feel like home when they are working for his company because essentially I believe he is dependent on migrant labour. Second is he can also look at getting their families here and settling around his unit so that you know that could uh, again ease out some issues. And third is he can look at innovation and, and 
convert his company into more capital intensive or technology intense in, in intensive company where you know uh, uh, some amount of uh, labor process can be converted to machines okay sure yeah in addition to what uh, mr thakkar has said uh, there is one scheme like you know you can ask your existing laborers that if you bring like you know some more people or other laborers from your area or your place then some kind of incentive is given like 15 days pay like or one month pay system. a referral system okay. so that can also help and again it's a chemical industry so there should be highest uh, standards of safety should be there uh, competitive compensation should be there any people are coming from other states then some stay arrangement of that kind of thing will help the matter okay so mr sundaram that's in response to your uh, question let's take in one last query this is coming to us from zoya khan uh, go ahead zoya what's your question basically we are uh, into an proprietorship firm and the uh, instrumental in manufacturing a comprehensive way of hospital uniform so industrial uniform school and etc so basically my major issue is due to gst the pricing on clothes got increased So how can we attract our uh, customers and bring our business on track? Okay, so she's saying a bit of a knock, but uh, most industries did know that GST was going to come in at some point, uh, and should have ideally been in a place where they were preparing for it. But specifically in response to Zoya, what would you have to say? The textile sector is very important for the economy because uh, huge employment opportunities are provided. Ten percent of exports come from textiles. but of course after gst was introduced textile sector was the i think most uh, vociferous about gst because uh, many people do, were not paying uh, taxes like you know small time uh, people involved in the value chain they were not paying taxes so they will have to register themselves and in order that you know in the chain down the line they should be able to claim the input tax credit but government has relaxed certain conditions like uh, uh, cotton uh, fabric and yarn they have reduced gst from 18% to 5% so short term there will be some pains but long term textile sector has bright future that is what uh, experts say sure okay to add to what mr dalal has just said that gst is just kicking in it is a transition phase countries developed countries like australia have taken more than a year and a half to settle down on gst so i would like to ask uh, uh, zoya to hold guns and not worry about the short term fluctuations the kind of manufacturing that she is into holds perennial demand so she is not into a seasonal or a fashion fashion product where you know the demand would go up and down and change there would be slight cost implications like increasing cost by 2 to 3% in the longest of the run but nothing beyond she doesn't have to worry and just hold your guns and things will be better in let's say 6 months from now all right uh, thank you both very much for being with us here tonight and answering all the questions that have come in gentlemen time for a break when we come back we will feature kavi's nail care on our small joint segment do stay tuned Welcome back with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow and tonight on Small Giants we're bringing the story of Kavi's nail care. The beauty industry is booming and nail care is taking center stage becoming an increasingly sought after component of the beauty regime. Mumbai based Kavi's nail care is cashing in on the craze and Pooja Jain paid the nail parlor visit to pick up on what makes the good old fashioned mani pedi such a staple. Take a look. <laughs>
Ravi's Nail Care is gaining ground with a client base that spans generations, all of whom cherish well-groomed nails. With an approach to nail care that is perhaps as holistic as it is artistic, Ravi's Nail Care is pushing the envelope with its range of nail extensions, acrylics and 3D gel art. We caught up with the founder of Kavi's Nail Care, a doctor turned entrepreneur who recognized and capitalized on an opportunity early on that was right at her fingertips. You're a doctor by profession, having practiced medicine for over a decade. What was your motivation to enter nail care mid-career? Doing medical practice and then having children, so priorities in my life changed. I wanted to really concentrate first on my kids, so I was at home for a few years. After being at home for two, three years and not doing really anything, I felt that I really wanted to do something different. And that's where the nails came in. I had this friend of mine who was here and she was going through this nail technician who was doing nails from home. So I thought, why not just go and check it out? So I went. I liked it. The whole concept was so different that I felt, no, I really wanted to do nails. Because during that time, I just learned only acrylics. I did not do gels or we didn't have wraps. We didn't know what is fiberglass, silk wrap. That's when was a turning point. That's when I felt, you know, let's go to the US. So it was quite an investment at that time, going to the US and studying. But my husband said, okay, fine. It's a good profession and I was really interested in doing this. So I went into went to US to study in 2001. There were so many nail salons in the US. You surprised like what we see here today now at this age in 2015 to 17. Those were the kind of things which we saw in the US at that time. And then I became the nail technician over there. I studied for nearly three and a half to four months and I came back. There were no nail salons in India at that time. See, we had few nail technicians who were operating from home, but we did not have nail salons. My first venture was on 7th of October in 2001. I started with a small place, not a really big place, because I really, at that point of time, I have not advertised. I have not done any kind of, uh, you can say, uh, commercial media or anything of that sort. But there was an article which came in midday at that time, some 15 days later after I had opened up the salon. On that day, I remember getting at least 35 phone calls for an inquiry to know what this nails is all about. That's how the clients started flowing in. So from this 350 square feet, I went into a 900 square feet where we had stations. From two stations, we had four stations coming in and we had three manicure pedicure stations coming in. So it was a growth which I had never expected. Our understanding is that Covey's Nail Care is part salon and part teaching academy. Walk us through how the business model has evolved. First, we started with manicures, pedicures and acrylics initially. Then after a year, I thought, let's not, why not do gels? Because gels was not at all in market. And this was new also in the US. They had also just started a few years ago. But 3D acrylic nail art, which was not at all common and, and I, in fact nail art itself was not common. Now people are doing it here in India. I did it so many years before. So we do basically acrylics, we do gels, we give treatment for nail biters. I could actually make use of my medical knowledge in this kind of field. So it's made a difference. After three years of my practice, as my practice started growing, we had a growing clientele and I was the only one who was doing nails at that time. In 2003, I started Institute of Nail Technology. A lot of people started calling us from other salons. They needed nail technicians. And so it was like an opportunity for those people of my students where they could get placements. We had people calling up and asking, can I just do only nail art? So we had a category or module saying that we teach only nail art. Plus, when people came in and they really wanted to make some career and they were not from the beauty industry, but they wanted to do nails. So that's where the artificial nail extensions came in, like acrylics, gels, 
we had raps so i think this was a real good opportunity for somebody to make a career out of doing nails how much has technology influenced nail design in your view technology has really changed over a period of years since i started i remember doing filing with my hands for nearly first 2 3 years then in 2003 i remember the introducing of uh, the electric file which came in now electric file has really been a boon if you can say it really improved my techniques plus the time overall time constraint like initially we would take around an hour and a half to 2 hours to do a client to complete a set of nails it took just 1 and 1/2 hour or 1 hour 15 minutes so that did make a lot of difference plus the end product finished product looked really fantastic when we started using the drill machine after few years came the gel polishes now gel polishes is not an extension basic gel polishes is an overlay which is done on natural nails and it lasts for at least 2 to 3 weeks they don't chafe the shine doesn't go it looks perfect i used to go every year for the trade shows to see what new products have come up in the market to see what are the different techniques which have come in so that i can bring in some new things into the indian market now being a doctor has really helped me like anybody having any kind of injury trauma if the nail is cracked chip we have rectified all these things and made it look absolutely natural What sort of acceptance has nail art garnered in the Indian market? When I started it we had just few nail technicians like you can just count them on your fingers. When I was in the nailathon when we had it some few years back 3 years back and I was one of the judges I remember having seen just few like 100 to 200 nail technicians in the whole show and after 2 years I have seen more than 1000 entries coming in. which shows and it's not only in mumbai it's all over india what i mean to say today you see all over india even in small places nail salons booming up coming in because it is a good market there is a demand for it so when there is a demand you need those kind of nail technicians i had one place which i started with which was a smaller place which i spoke about initially in santa cruz then i shifted to a bigger place in khar now i have one more outlet in south bombay and huge's road so it's like this shows that from where i started with a small place with three staff of 3 today i have a staff of 30 so that shows that the demand is so much of nail technicians so we as nail technicians have catered to the indian women today are there any customer transformations you can tell us more about what sort of confidence do well groomed nails ultimately induce today every woman wants to look beautiful so nails cannot be missed though it's one of the smallest part it is very very important for grooming i think the confidence level is fantastic it's not only for the nail biting people who would absolutely hide their hands but the confidence in talking the confidence in showing you know how you want to express yourself it really manifolds when you do nails Well, at Kavi's Nail Care, it's always been very excellent. You know, it's one-to-one -one services. My association with Kavi's Nail Care has been like over ten years, and I don't think there's ever been a session where I've gone back dissatisfied. It's amazing, very professional, very creative. Girls are super friendly. There are many nail parlors, but Kavi's Nail Care they really do it differently. Wherever I've been, whichever part of the world I may have been, I somehow just don't get the satisfaction. which i get here kavi's nail care kavi nail care is like amazing best thing i've discovered in the last 4 years with its in-house institute of nail technology kavi's nail care is fostering and furthering nail artistry in india with its graduates pursuing the profession across the country as a business kavi's nail care subscribes to the philosophy that no nail is to be left behind and as a brand kavi's nail care seems to have nailed it
completely out of time on this episode of Leaders of Tomorrow. If you have anything that you want to say to us, do remember you can always write in at leadersoftomorrow at timesgroup.com. You can also reach us on social media on LOT underscore ET now or Sunanda underscore J. That's my personal Twitter handle. Or on Facebook on Leaders of Tomorrow on ET now. You can also call us on the number you see on your screen. We promise to have all your questions answered. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Thank you.